Hello and welcome back to my office. And in fact, this is the office of a complete dipstick. In the last week, I was refilling my sh favourite Schaefer, which is a delightful little Schaefer snorkel pen. And when I pulled off the back and pushed it back in to suck in some ink, there was a sort of a splatter noise and my hands got covered in ink. There's some sort of fault inside. This now needs a pen hospital. But I had some good news last week because those of you who know me will recognise this. This is the detection collection Conway Stewart. It was made for me by Conway Stewart because it was the first of their collection for crime writers. And it was a brilliant idea, except shortly afterwards Conway Stewart hit a financial glitch and they had to cease trading. Still, beautiful pen and I've been delighted with it, apart from the nib, which is my fault. I acquired for it an italic medium nib, which looked beautiful. And when you wrote perfectly with it, it looked wonderful on the paper. It was great. But it did have this slight difficulty that you had to have the pen at exactly the right angle to get a smooth write. If you moved even slightly in any direction, then it was a bit scratchy. So I wasn't over the moon. So I've been talking to Conway Stewart recently, and they were very generously offered to swap it for a newer nib of theirs, but which would be a stub nib, which is a great deal smoother to use. And it arrived last week, and do you know what? It's beautiful, it's absolutely wonderful. I was over the moon. So last week was a good week, until I went out to Morris practice on Sunday. And while I was there at Morris practice, I had this carefully protected in a rickshaw protection. Let me show you. It was in this, a rickshaw sleeve for a fountain pen, which is fluffy on the inside and it's nicely protective and it works really well. This was in that. This flew out of my pocket while dancing. I know, why was I taking this away? I don't know why I was carrying it dancing is the short answer. But as a result, the cap broke into two pieces. So now I have a delightful pen and the nib has migrated to my drake. I'm going to talk about the nib today because it's fantastic and tomorrow that poor old Conway Stewart is going back to Conway Stewart to see if I can pay to have a new cap made for it. So let's have a look at how it works. Here as you can see is my lovely Dartmoor resin Conway Stewart. One of my prides and joys and now it's in bits. So that's got to go back. Hey ho! But what we have got here, but what we have got is the Drake. This is a glorious pen. Why is it glorious? because it's solid silver. It feels, I don't know what it feels like really, it feels very heavy, which for me is glorious. I have reviewed this elsewhere. It's got a picture of the Drake, uh, sorry, the Golden Hind, Drake's little ship. And on the bottom there's nothing much really, apart from the assay marks around here, it's got assay marks to prove it's all solid silver. And when I say solid, let's just demonstrate what I mean. So often you find a fountain pen that says it's solid and it's just a thin sleeve. This is not a thin sleeve. This is a weighty mass of solid silver. And it is absolutely glorious to write with. But I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about this, which is without any shadow of doubt in my mind, the very best nib I have used ever. It is soft, incredibly smooth, but because of the profile of the nib, which is very slim, 
on the horizontal strokes but quite fat on the up and down strokes it gives a wonderful line variation without any effort whatsoever it has stamped on it that it's a medium which you can possibly just about make out there let's just move this closer and see if you can read that so you can see there's a little M there and that's because it was sent away to get reground by an expert nib grinder and ended up as an italic medium so let's have a look at how it writes I'm seriously thinking that I ought to do some ASMR videos where I'm just recording the noise of a pen on paper because so many people seem to really like that Now, some people will wonder, well, okay, that's fine, but what would an ordinary pen look like? Well, here is a medium Visconti. Now you can see here, no effort, the lines, horizontal and vertical, give about the same variation. But, let's just look at this. So if I go horizontal first, look how slim those lines are and then you can easily see the difference between the horizontal and the vertical, that's with no effort. Then if I put a bit of effort into it, the horizontal lines don't change awfully, but if I put effort into the verticals, you see a massive variation. Wonderful! And in fact, if I put alongside these a Pilot Metropolitan, again, you can see the huge very the huge difference there is in the thickness of the lines compared to that's a this is a medium but it's a Japanese medium which means it's more or less a European fine now of course there's several things to say here the first is if you really have a good idea what it is you want from your fountain pen then if you speak to Conway Stewart, they are incredibly helpful about trying to make sure you get exactly the type of nib you want. And there is a huge amount of variety. Personally, I really, really like a stub nib. I like having that variation between horizontal and vertical because it gives character to your writing. I think that you can see here, it makes your writing look more characterful. I think it makes your writer look more elegant. It is just much more appealing. And inks like KWZ Honey, which I was using here, gives you a lovely amount of shading and contrast between different areas of your writing which I believe makes it look better a lot of people think it makes your writing look tatty and scruffy I disagree with them so that's one side of things if you're interested in getting a particular type of nib Conway Stewart will always be delighted to help that's very handy I am also I've got to say I mean it it's nice to talk about what a plonker I am taking a fountain pen Morris practicing I don't know why I did, except for the fact that I really loved that pen and I adored that nib. So it just seemed to be natural to take it with me, really. But it is 
really important that if you go to a firm that's going to charge you a fair amount of money for your pen, that you know that they're there and will help you when something does go wrong. I, sp I contacted um, Conway Stewart the day after the Queen's funeral, in fact, because that was the earliest I could get in touch with them. And they were immediately understanding, appreciative, went and checked their stocks. They have got Dartmoor resin still, so they're going to be able to help. I've no idea how long it'll take and I've no idea how much it'll cost. Sadly, I don't think it's going to be that cheap because it's a fairly major piece of work, but it is my detection collection pen and it's essential to me that I, I still have it because I love that pen. So that's that. Um, I would also say that I have had, uh, I've, uh, this is just a word of explanation, I have had some complaints recently that my handwriting is lousy. Um, there's actually a reason for that and that is that this arm, as you can see, doesn't function properly. This finger is not coming in. It's worse than that. It's all of these three fingers and now the forefinger as well have ceased. Well, they're still functioning just, but they're a great deal weaker. And so even when I'm on my push bike and trying to change gear, which involves these fingers, it's getting harder and harder to do it. And the reason apparently why is that my ulnar nerve somehow is trapped. Uh, it's a bit like when you have carpal tunnel syndrome, if you've got um, problems with your fingers, sometimes it's the carpal tunnels that the tendons run through which have got jammed and it takes an operation to fix it. Apparently I need a similar thing on my ulnar nerve. So it does mean that I am suffering right now when I try to write with a pen, it is incredibly difficult. Luckily when I'm typing, because that's the main part of my job, could help us, um, when I'm typing everything seems to work okay. The keys are light enough that it doesn't get affected. But for those who are wondering why I haven't replied to letters and other things like that, I'm afraid that's the, sam the simple reason. It's not just being overworked and uh, overloaded with work. It's also that my arm and my fingers are not functioning properly anymore, which is deeply irritating. Now, that was hopefully of interest. I hope you don't object to my writing with that lovely pen, with that lovely nib. Next time I can show you, well, at some point hopefully, I'll be able to show you that nib in my other Conway Stewart and show how that works. So long as I don't damage it again. And if you enjoyed that, don't forget you can like, subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to be notified on future videos and do all those good things. If you want to support the channel, you can go to my Patreon account and then you can get a little bit of extra information every month, which quite a few people seem to like and that's nice. And apart from that, I'm off now and in October, for the first week of October and then the third week of October, I'm away. I'll be running two tours with the Smithsonian Institute, talking about the golden age of crime writing, golden age crime writers, modern day crime writers, how crime writers write, how we develop plots, how we develop characterization, all those good things with 30 odd people on each tour. And it's going to be great fun. It may well mean that I'm going to be late with a couple of videos though. I'm going to try to record a few things next week so that I've got a few left in the pot. But just in case, I'll apologise now in case I'm going to be a little bit tardy with a couple of videos. These things do happen sadly. But thanks a lot for watching. Hope that was fun and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.